what do we have here? Well, I think I could see a piece of cartilage. Well, I think I could see a strip of squamous mucosa, which we see here. Um, I think I could see some submucosal glands basically look like they're sort of mucus. I could see a whole whopping infiltrate of uh, acute inflammatory cells and fibrin. And we already know we're dealing with the upper respiratory tract for all those reasons. This is the larynx. Uh, here is part of a laryngeal cartilage. Here are some submucosal glands. And here is the ulcerative, destructive process uh, throughout the laryngeal mucosa, showing destruction and ulceration of the uh, squamous mucosa. They can see a little strip of over here and causing a huge uh, amount of uh, neutrophilic infiltrates and fibrin deposition. This is all neutrophils and fibrin in here. This is mostly neutrophils here with some fibrin. This is probably primarily fibrin here. And here's a little remnant of squamous mucosa. So if you took the list of any of the uh, organisms that might be causing this, you probably have a list as long as the coast of California. If it was a young child, however, especially under the age of two, you could probably narrow it down to a uh, few, the overwhelming most likely of which would be a bacteria that is gram-negative. And although you would like to think of gram-negative as being either rods or balls or cocci or bacilli, this one is classified as a coxobacillus because it is a ball, but it's kind of an oval ball. This is Haemophilus, Haemophilus influenzae. This is a severe, possibly fatal, Haemophilus influenzae laryngitis. Uh, in young children, H. flu, as the pediatricians call this bug, uh, is uh, very common. Uh, a very, very common cause of ear infection as well, because that's part of the upper respiratory tract, middle ear infection. And uh, without a doubt, the overwhelming most common cause for a meningitis in a kid under two. Uh, you could see uh, its powerful, destructive uh, force in this picture here. Thank you very much.